I'm Daniel. I'm Jay-Z. This is Just Might DIY. When you first start doing a sublimation tumbler, the two issues you are likely to run into are ghosting at the tops and bottoms and gaps along your seams. And as it would seem, we've been working on this for a long time to come up with a process to eliminate these most common of imperfections. And so that's what we're going to show you today. The methods that we have found to give us the most consistent results on a tumbler. So we'd like to give a big old thanks to Hippo for the ink and the paper and the tumblers and making this video possible. We have worked with them quite a bit and it's because we love their products and really enjoy working with them. So let's, uh, let's get to it. Before we get started, we're going to show you Hippo's new sublimation tumblers. They come four in a box and you can see when we pull it out, they have a nice little slidey top topper thingy. They have a little pad that goes on the bottom to protect everything. And of course there is a straw that's made of metal and a pipette cleaner. You have some shrink wrap if you're going to do it in an oven and instructions. Now before we go further, we're going to give you some notes on designs and difficulty because your design will determine how hard this is. You can get a design like this that has lots of white space at the top and bottom. It does have a pattern match, but it's a little easier to line up because it's not totally solid. Something that has a lot of white space is going to be easier to sublimate and is probably great for a beginner. Now kind of moving into intermediate, something like this or the next one that will show that has glitter that has white at the top or a little more flexibility. And if you do miss a little bit, do ghost a little bit, it's not going to be as obvious. Now looking at seams, this design with the gnome doesn't have a seam matchup, so you don't have to worry about getting that perfect, as well as tumblers that have names on them. With the white space, again, you just don't have to get that seam exact. Now something like this design has got black and white high contrast pattern match, gold leaves, it's solid at the top, solid at the bottom. This kind of design will actually be really difficult to sublimate well. You can do it, especially with these tips that we're going to show you, but just know that it's going to be a little more challenging. We're going to go in the middle for this video for our sample design. This doesn't have a pattern match on it, but we're going to create a section with words on it. So we still have to nail that seam. Like we will notice 100% if there's white showing through that seam, but it's not a pattern match. Um, so just keep the design in mind when you're thinking of difficulty as you're starting out and getting better at tumblers. And once you have your pattern, it's uh, important to size your your pattern correctly. Now tumblers, these tumblers we're using happen to be about 9.3 inches in circumference, but we're going to go ahead and oversize it to about 9.6 and we're going to make the other measurement also slightly oversized at 8.2. And we do that because when you don't have a pattern match, you have more flexibility to trim to size once you get in there. You can see us reversing the image and turning it on its side so that it will go through on one sheet of paper. Absolutely. And just remember, if you do have words in your sublimation design, you need to mirror that image. Now, this is an Epson EcoTank 15000 with sublimation paper and sublimation ink. Both of these are from Hippo. That's right, now we're gonna go into our print settings and we always use the same print settings with this paper. We use premium presentation paper matte and best quality. So once we have that, we will click print and then it'll come out of the printer. Now notice that this is definitely sped up and your colors aren't going to look right coming out of a sublimation printer. They will look right when they are heated. The heat is on. <laughs> Not yet, because we got to wrap the tumbler. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this part. So, a Cricut cutting mat self-healing, a brand new X-Acto blade, and one of these fancy rulers that have all these measurement lines on them, metal edges. This makes it way, way easier to get your tr design truly squared and measured up. We take off all of the white first. We will say that ruler has been discontinued, but we'll link something similar in the description. Now we're going to manipulate the height of the tumbler first. I like to trim it from the bottom because I can use that X-Acto knife to mark where I want the edge to stop. And then pull out that fancy ruler, use it to create a very 90 degree line on it. And you can see that easily brings me to the exact height I want, ending the design before the curve of the tumbler. That's very important. Now we're going to pull the design as tight as humanly possible. You can see the stress in my fingers at this point. 
and I'm massaging the seam that I need to trim. You, I mark it so that when I open it up, I can see this, I'm gonna to point to it, you're not gonna see it, but I can see this line that I created by that massage, and that is my next marker to put the ruler, use those fancy markings to create a very nice 90 degree. Straight line. And you can see that actually brought me exactly to a seamless design. Now, no, if you do have to err on one side, err on the side of longer and having more trims than cutting shorter, because once it's too short, you have to reprint. This is a 99% alcohol we're using to clean the tumbler with, always an important part. Anytime you're using a hard sublimation substrate for sure. And our pieces of tape, we put taps on every single piece of tape. If it makes it so much easier, you'll see that we love to do our hot pulls. <laughs> So <laughs> we put tabs to make that pulling easier. Absolutely. I get three pieces prepared so that I tack it on one side, use it to lever over to the other side, and massage the seam in between. As you see, there's an exact match here. That paper is touching, and that's exactly what you need, touching but not overlapping. This long piece of tape we're setting up right here, after we put a tab on it, is to create uh, the initial firm, yeah, it's you know not taut, it's easily applied. A piece of tape around this is the bottom of the tumbler of course and what you'll see better here in a second is I'm using my left hand in this case to pin the bottom and the right hand to pull over the top kind of acting like a, a tension shrink wrap like effect you can see it pulls the shadowy aspect out of it and when you see that happen you know you're getting that direct contact so that's so important. Your paper has to be 100% flush to this tumbler, and this is getting us there. Now, once you manage to make it all the way around, you're going to inspect your job, feel around it. If you feel anything you think could be questionable, you will massage it into place. I use the tips of my thumbs because I'm a powerful massage therapist. <laughs> but normal people can do this too. <laughs> and the tips of your fingernails can actually work out well. Mm -hmm. You just got to work any possible living gap out of it. Yeah, so no folds, no gaps, no anything. If you have a gap in your paper, just go ahead and stop. Don't waste the tumbler and restart the process. The second piece of tape is to act like a piece of shrink wrap again. I'm going to pin it really hard against the tumbler. You can see by the whites of my fingers that I am putting a lot of stress on this tape. Some people use like silicone bands or something like that for their tops and bottoms. We don't like that because you can't actually see what's underneath that. We like this tape because we can see where there are folds if anything happens. And it just gives us that tautness that we need and the visibility that we need to ensure this is going to turn out well. You follow your same rules about massaging. I'm always working towards the center point of the tumbler. That does help with making sure that your, your tape doesn't crinkle awkwardly. Mm -hmm. I mean, the tape can have crinkles as long as your paper doesn't. But the more awkward the tape crinkles, the, the more likely your paper very will. Very true. Very true. Now, we're going to show you the same thing again on the top. I did not pull that piece long enough, so I added a little extra bit in there. On this layer, that doesn't matter so much. But what you can see even better than on the bottom is how I pull on this. Pin it on the bottom, pull on the top, and you can see that gap disappear. Absolutely. So what you do on the bottom, you need to do on the top as well. So we are going to speed through this a little bit, but again, show you just to really emphasize because this taping is ultimately what determines if you're going to have a good top and bottom. So again, look at that stress, look at that tautness that he's pulling with the tape and just getting that shrink wrap like effect. effect. And again, we are going to be using another little hot tab pull to get it nice and We yellow. love our tabs. Tabs, you will see exactly why we obsess over tabs, but this is what it looks like before it goes in the press. Of course, you can use a convection oven if you want, but we like the tumbler press. Look at all those tabs. Tape is perfect. Everything looks good. Top and bottom, we're ready to go. It's a wrap, folks. It's not a wrap. Well, this part's a wrap. What's not a wrap is the video because we still need to sublimate it. Again, we're using a tumbler press, and we'll show you how to do that now. We do use blowout paper always. We don't want anything coming through. This HIPAA paper is really good and doesn't really blow out, but always protect your presses. So this is a sheet of copy paper. You can also use butcher paper. Again, a tab sheet of paper. Put it in the press, which we already had adjusted for the tumbler. It's 375 for 70 seconds, and then we turn it 
180 degrees because there is a small gap up top and we don't want any gaps in the heat and pressure. So do it one more time, 375 for 70. And when we pull it out, again with the heat resistant glove on because this thing's hot, we're going to get right into our peel as we adjust the camera. And then look at how easy these tabs make everything. We're not fighting with it. We're not trying to rip the paper, none of that. We just pull these tape tabs and get the cleanest reveal ever. And look at how well that turned out. We'll give you some close-ups here in a second, but we are so happy with the way this sublimated. Of course, we're gonna clean the bottom real quick before we put the adhesive-based stopper on it. And again, massage. <laughs> and look at this. So 360 degrees here. We're not hiding anything. Perfect seam, perfect top. Sorry, it's a little wobbly I was hand-holding here, uh, but perfect top, perfect bottom. I mean, this turned out so well. Thanks again to Hippo for sponsoring this video. We hope you guys learned a lot and are going to get better results on your sublimation tumblers. And if you do, then you should go ahead and give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell. If you have any questions about how to do better perfections on your sublimation tumblers, then feel free to put it out in the comment line. And of course, know that everything that we use today is listed in the description. Also in the description are links to all of our social handles. Please connect with us across platforms. We love hearing from you. And don't forget to check out our blog at JustMyDIY.com. Thanks for watching.